a quick recap of what we have done so far. <clears throat> depreciation the methods of depreciation in order to compute or measure depreciation the three factors which are required are the cost of the asset the cost of the asset being the cost all the cost incurred till the asset can be put to use so it would be the purchase cost the loading cost the installation cost any other cost which is incurred in order to make it usable that is actual Next is the life of the asset, which is an estimated figure. We estimate the life of the asset to be 5 years, 4 years, 7 years, whatever. And also we need the scrap value or the residual value, the value at which we can sell the asset after its useful life is over. What is the depreciable amount? From this we got the depreciable amount as depreciable amount is nothing but cost minus scrap and this depreciable amount had to be spread over the life of the asset that is the depreciation amount how it is spread over the life of the asset is it equal is it based on use is it reducing this depends entirely on the method of depreciation that we use so the first method was the straight line method we discussed SLM method, straight line method or the fixed installment method where you have equal depreciation each year. What is the amount of depreciation? It is nothing but the depreciable amount divided by the life of the asset. By the life of asset gives us the amount of depreciation every year which is fixed. This is normally used with those assets where large amount of repairs is not expected as the asset gets older. It is simple, easy to compute and once computed the same amount of depreciation is applicable each year. The reducing balance method, here we have the amount of depreciation reduces. The rate of depreciation is computed as 1 minus the nth root of scrap value by cost of asset into expressed as a percentage. This is how the rate of depreciation is computed when we know the cost life and scrap value. In this case, it is a fixed rate which is applied on the reducing balance of the asset is applied on the written down value or the book value of the asset. Therefore, the amount of depreciation goes on reducing every year. Usually, this method is used with plant machinery etc. which are expected to have heavy repairs expenditure as the machine grows older. This is done so that the total cost of using of the machine, depreciation plus repairs and maintenance can more or less be uniform during the life of the asset. Depreciation goes on decreasing while repairs goes on increasing so that more or less a uniform total charge can be maintained during the life of the asset towards cost of running of the machine. The sum of digits method is a variation of the reducing balance method where depreciation is charged as the depreciable amount multiplied by the number of years remaining including the current year divided by sum of the years. Sum of the years or in other words a simple method is n into n plus 1 by 2. This is how depreciation is computed for each year. So if it is 5 years of life the first year would have depreciable amount into the number of years remaining including the current year would be 5 years 5 by total number sum of years digits that is 5 by 15 into depreciable amount. In the next year, second year, it would be 4 by sum of the years that is again 15 into 
the depreciable amount and so on and so forth. This is only a variation of the reducing balance method. The other methods that we discussed were the depletion method, machine hour method and production unit method all of which vary depending on the usage of the machine. And depletion method is normally used in mines and quarries. Here a depreciation rate is computed based on the estimated total deposits to be mined or extracted. Depending on the amount of extraction, this rate is then applied. Similarly, under the machine hour method, the life of the machine is estimated in the total number of machine hours. The rate is the machine hour rate of depreciation is determined by taking the total depreciable amount divided by the total estimated machine hours. So we get a machine hour rate. Depending then on the number of hours worked, this rate is applied on the number of hours worked to arrive at depreciation each year. Depreciation therefore varies depending on the usage. The production unit method, here the life of the asset is determined as the total number of units expected to be produced. So the rate per unit, the depreciation rate per unit is computed as the depreciable amount divided by the total estimated number of units produced. This gives us the rate per unit. This into number of units will give us the depreciation for the respective year.